Hey, welcome back. Okay, so far we've talked a lot about the characteristic curve and uh, later on in chapter three, I'm gonna get into applying it to a POV. But uh, today we're gonna to start on chapter two of this series and that is about POV. Now, one of the things uh, I, I'm constantly asked by cinematographers entering the industry is what's the most difficult thing they can learn as a cinematographer. And a lot of people think I'm going to talk about cameras and a lot of people think I'm going to talk about lenses and all the different types of equipment. Well, I'm here to tell you that learning the different types of equipment, the different types of cameras, all the technical stuff is easy. You can read a book, you can watch a video, um, you can go to a rental house and you can play with cameras and learn the cameras. Learning the technical parameters of all that stuff is easy. The thing that is very, very difficult is working out who you actually are as a visual artist. And that's the most important thing for a cinematographer. You've got to have your own POV or your own point of view. The last thing you want to be is a cinematographer who turns up and knows everything there is to know about the camera, knows everything there is to know about your lenses, but doesn't have a perspective or a point of view uh, on which to build a visual style for the project that you're shooting. Last thing you also want to do is turn up with all that knowledge and line up a killer three-point lighting shot and then go and assess the exposure off the monitor. And does it look good? Yep, okay, let's shoot it. That's not what people are after when they're after a cinematographer. They're after someone who's going to bring a particular style particular visual style, a particular way of looking at the world to the project. And that's what I'm going to talk about in chapter two, is what that means exactly and how you go about developing it. So let's get to it. The most important factor in determining visual style is point of view. And when I talk about point of view, I'm talking about your particular point of view. And that is, how you see the world, how you see the world around you, how you interact with it, what sort of things do you like and what don't you like? Do you like rainy days? Do you like snowy days? Do you like thunderstorms, lightning storms? Do you like the desert? Do you like the forests? Do you like the ocean? Do you like the beach? All of those things add up to, to being part of your POV. But more than just what's going on in the world around you, you need to also have a perspective on photography. What sort of photography do you like? Do you like black and white? Do you like color? Do you like large format, small format? Do you like stills? Do you like motion picture photography? How about art? What, what artists do you like? What kind of paintings do you like? Do you like contemporary? Do you like abstract? Do you, do you like the works of the old masters? Again, all part of building up uh, a POV and your own perspective so that you've got something to draw on when you're de developing visual style. Let's go even further, let's go to music. What do you like in music? What, what style? Do you like blues? Do you like jazz? Do you like pop? Do you like rock? Do you, do you like classical? All of that stuff. So what you need to do is you need to start building a repertoire of things that you like and things that you don't like so that you start to build up your own POV. So when you go into a production, you've, your starting point is actually your POV. So there's four questions you, you need to ask yourself. And those questions are, who are you as a visual artist? And you can only determine that after you actually determine your true POV. Adding all those elements in so that eventually you've got a point of view that you are coming from and uh, something that you can draw on to develop your visual style. The second element is what can you bring to a production? Now hopefully what you bring to a production is your particular POV. You're not just turning up as, as some people call them, a shooter who just gets a good exposure and then they can all fix it in post. Hopefully you're going to turn up to set with a very definite idea of what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And that's going to be all built on, again, your POV. And that will become your visual style for that particular project. The next element, the third point, is actually your POV. Do you bring your perspective with you to, to the set? 
And that's important because hopefully that's what people are hiring you for. They're hiring you for your particular vision of the world and your particular, your particular interpretation of the artistic environment in which you live and in which you work. And then finally, what is your visual style? Uh, now, is that your visual style as an individual or is it the visual style that you're, you've developed for the project? Now, one uh, point of contention here is that a lot of people say a director of photography shouldn't have a visual style. And, and my feeling on that is that, that that's not correct. I think you should have a visual style and your visual style is, is based on your POV of the world and that's who you are as a visual artist. So uh, when you come onto a project, you come with your visual style. Now you may not be able to inject your visual style into, into the film and you may not be able to do all the things that you want to do, but at least if you come with a visual style, you've got a perspective that you're bringing to the show. And, and presumably when you get hired, you're going to get hired because you have a particular vision. So that's why, that's why they're calling you. And uh, so that's what you've got, to, you've got to bring, you've got to develop it uh, so that when you're out in the marketplace, people know that you're the guy we call who can shoot everything like a Rembrandt or you're the guy we call if we want everything shot like a Caravaggio, or you're the guy who can develop any visual style that you can imagine because you've got such a broad point of view. In the next video, I'm gonna look at how you go about developing that point of view. Okay, I hope that worked for you and giving you a little bit of an idea of the application of all this stuff. Uh, of course, we'll get into it a lot more detail in, uh, in the coming videos. Uh, but again, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, click on that subscribe button. Comments, uh, any comments you've got, put them in the comments section down below. I'm always happy to, uh, to read your thoughts and, uh, and answer questions. And once again, thanks for watching. See you soon.